All right, so your brother is here today with a message from the Lord. Prayerfully, we can get this message without any connectivity issues or any loud noises. Please excuse any loud noise, anything that you may hear. I may from time to time have to blow my nose or drink water. So just bear with your brother. But we are going to preach this gospel today in Jesus name so if you are among the faithful if you are someone that has been focusing on Jesus Christ in these times that we are in you have come to notice that we are in a very sensitive time we are in a time where there is a lot of spiritual activity going on as the, the presence of God is making himself more known and more active and more evident we also see the kingdom of darkness is also desiring to take his place and desiring to establish himself in our world. So we have two forces that are fighting against each other for superiority, for dominion. Now we know that those of us that are with the Lord Jesus Christ, in the end we win. So that's why it's important that today and as you go forward from today, you need to start making conscious decisions that shows God that you are on the side of Jesus, obeying, obedience, praying for the power of the Spirit of God to help you obey. And if salvation is not yet where you have arrived at, that has not been a destination that you've gotten to yet, then prayerfully, after this message is preached to you, grace may make space available for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and as your Redeemer. So, I'm going to preach a message today and prayerfully, those of you that have ears to hear will be able to, to receive this message today. And we're going to be in Zechariah chapter 5. And we're going to read some verses here. And I may also adjust the camera if we don't have the best view here. So let me try to reposition this. We have to move. All right. So we'll just step out a little bit. Okay. So, Zechariah chapter 5, starting at the first verse, it says, Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying robe. So Zechariah is seeing this flying robe, like a flying piece of paper or something. He's seeing this in the air. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying robe. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof is ten cubits. This is also the dimensions of, of Solomon's porch. Verse 3. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. So on this roll, there are two things that is on there are things there is something that is on both sides of these row one thing is on each side of the row so on one side we have one side we have it says those that stealeth will be cut off and those that swear it so today we have people that falsely use the name of God people that use the Lord's name they have a form of godliness but they deny the power thereof we have people who are professing faith in Jesus and they walk in the power of God where they have the power this is where the word of God says um, where it talks about haven't I done haven't I casted out devils haven't I raised the dead haven't I healed the sick haven't I done all these things in your name so it's talking about the fact that people have power and they will use that power and use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in order to execute certain things but but the Lord is classifying them 
as a thief and a, and a robber because he's not their lord. They've just used him to obtain measures of power to try to control their world because that's where man is right now. That's where we are as people. People are desiring power. They want to have power over their lives and they want to have power over their world. And they don't want to depend on God so that God can control the power that he gives and so that God can control the world because ultimately God wants to use us as his vessels of honor, as his earthen vessels to execute his judgment or to, to release his wisdom or his 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 grace or his glory or whatever he's wanting to make available to man man is a vehicle by which he likes to release things so on one end of this role we have the person that a person that stealeth so we have people and some people don't use the name of Jesus they're just simply people that have understood that you can you can perform certain certain rituals you can do certain things and you can obtain measures of power you can open up portals and realms of wisdom and understanding and power and in doing so you you can better control your world you can manipulate certain things about life for your betterment so this is one of the aspects of the curse because we know the, the ultimate curse that man is under is sin and we see manifestations of that sin today through pride, rebellion, unbelief, uh, fear, lust. So because man is in this world that he's trying desperately to make sense of, if man does not accept the perfect son of God, if he does not accept the God of the flesh being Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, he does not accept salvation through Jesus Christ and makes right with God, man is going to live a vain, temporary life. He's going to live a, a life that classifies him as one that steals. And that's a curse. That's a curse that is on you if you are a person that has the ability to be in this world and to affect this world and to impact this world, but Jesus is not your way by which you do that. You don't live an obedient and a faithful life to Jesus. That is classifying you as a person that steals. And then the other side of this, this role in verse 3 of Zechariah 5, it says that one that sweareth. So just falsely proclaiming and using the name of the Lord. Doing things on the Lord's behalf that you don't have, that you don't have the ability to do. Making oaths and making agreements with false gods and false organizations, false belief systems, false things. The Lord is saying that you inherit or you strengthen the curse on your life when you make oaths or you make partnerships or you make agreements with ungodly sources, ungodly things. So as we are entering into a time where as we are making we are getting to a time where it's becoming more distinct and people are making decisions to decide if they want to spend forever with Jesus or if they just simply want to live day by day and just make it through the day and just simply live lives of pleasure and live lives of satisfying their flesh. Then understand that there's a, even a scripture in Proverbs that says that the curse of the Lord, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. So we're classified as wicked when we don't accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And we don't go forth with daily obedience, daily commitment, daily devotion, daily worship, and constantly being in his presence so that he can make himself one with us and make our hearts and our minds in alignment with his perfect will. We will find ourselves, and we can find ourselves in the category of one that steals or one that swears, meaning because we want to survive and we are afraid of death, we will make decisions that place us out of the will of God by agreeing to things, by coming into, by acknowledging and agreeing and coming into 
fellowship with darkness and evil and wicked things that the Lord has tried to protect us and keep us from. So let's continue. Verse 4 says, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thieves. And now he's talking about that it's actually going to affect the homes of the people who make these decisions. The, the people who live lifestyles that show that they would rather steal from God. They would rather steal from God than to submit to him. Because if you're not submitting to God, but yet God is doing good for you, he's doing good through you, then you are stealing. So it's saying that on verse 4 that, it's going, that the Lord is going to bring it forth. He's going to bring forth into the house of the thief, the curse that he talked about in verse 3, and into the into the house of him that sweareth falsely in my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and it shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So it's saying that without repentance, without co confession of sins, without a transformation in the thinking, without a sanctification of the person, without the Lord building the house, actually remaking this house rebuilding this house being the stabilization of the house being the foundation of the house and it's saying that it will remain there and what happens when the curse of the lord remains in a house is going to eventually this this one by one is going to break the house down man breaks down in time without god god doesn't always immediately just destroy things or people places things right in an instant God is long-suffering, and he's slow to anger. He's merciful. So because of that, it has to be just a continuation of decisions being made that this, this people group, this you as a person, the people group, the generation, the people, whatever, are making decisions that they don't want God. So that God has to make decisions or judgments that shows how he feels or what he thinks about what he's seeing. When the children of Israel will rebel against God, God the God was never God's intent to show the world that he wanted his people to suffer, but he had to show because he had made placed his name on them and made them his people that were actually meant to represent him. He had to deal with them when they when they disobeyed and they rebelled against him. And that's how God deals with the sons of God but also those that are in the world and that he is desiring to commit to him that he's desiring to come to him he's going to make decisions that shows that he is angry and he's displeased with with the lifestyles with the decisions with the condition of the heart with the current state of the mind verse 5 so this is another vision here that Zechariah. So verse 1 through 5, well, well, before it was one vision. And now we're going to get to the, sec the other one here. Verse 5, Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up thine eyes and see what it is that goeth forth. Verse 6, And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance throughout all the earth. So Zechariah is showing, like, look, this is what this is what the sins of the people have actually built up. He's showing him spiritually, like, look, this is what happens when people live lives of sin and rebellion. That's being stored. It's being built up. It's not just people just sinning and living lives, but no, in the spirit, something is being stored up. So what in verse five or verse six, what a, what an ephah is, it's a dry measurement of about six of seven gallons so this is this is communicating the heaviness of sin so the heaviness of sin has now built up in the spirit and this is where we are now because people are living lives of, of sin they, they they use God's name in vain they place names on they put t-shirts and you know we were talking about in my ministry here with uh, a couple of my brothers and sisters how people wear shirts like this but it'll say like God is dope they're trying to merge God into the world and make God like this this uh, worldly trend and they communicate him in a way that's very loose and very uh, dishonorable he's not being honored and reverenced as God but yet we're 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 lowering him down to one of just 
a God is not worthy and honored and to be high esteem and to be exalted, but we place him on a t-shirt and call him dope. Knowing that that word dope has nothing to do with the righteousness of God, it has nothing to do with the holiness and the sovereignty of God. So the sins of man are reaching the heavens. There's a scripture in Revelations 18. It says that the sins and the iniquities of the people have reached unto heaven. It's in Revelations 18. Uh, and it's talking about the fact that people's sins are not being ignored by God. Those sins are being, they're, 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 as they're being, as people are just collectively committing sins, bloodlines, people groups, certain cities, certain states, certain towns and regions, as these pe as people collectively come into agreement of sin, they're storing up an abundance of sin. And that sin is, 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 is rising up to heaven and it's getting to God and it's making God angry. And God has to respond to that. So this is what we see going forth. The heaviness of sin is now reaching God. People are starting to get God's attention and they're starting to make God angry at the fact that they don't want him. They don't want him. People don't want God in their lives right now. They just want pleasure. They want money. They want success. They want lust. They want perversion. They want to be free. They want to be free from responsibility. They want to be free from the consequences of sin. They want to be free to express themselves in any way they want and with and 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 God is not meant to respond to that but we we have to understand that sin catches up with you it's been something that's been said all the time and it's I'm going to reiterate it again sin is just like it's like people are sinning and they don't realize it's like you're using a credit card you know when you use a credit card you don't have to pay for it right then and there but you're going to have to pay for it later and this is what people are doing. They are storing up accounts of sin. Not realizing that later on you're going to have to pay for this. And unless you accept Jesus Christ, who is going to wipe that clean and to, to make your account back in the positive and you won't be in the negative, you're going, to, you're going to be standing before him with this account that's delinquent. And he's going to have to tell you, depart from me because I never knew you. Why? Because you did not bear my name. You did not live for me. You did not tell my world about me. You did not represent me. And you did not take on my spirit so that me so that I could be one with you. So that we can so that I can live and help you live to please the Father and to serve your fellow man in righteousness. <clears throat> Verse 7. Let's continue. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. So if you know anything about lead, lead is like silver. Now in the word of God, when you when you see silver, silver is like redemption. The, the color of silver in the word of God, when you see how it's it's used and how it's very, very um it's how, how God uses silver in certain instances in the word of God. It's meant to represent redemption. And that's why I don't believe that we will see silver in heaven because we won't need to be redeemed because man will already be redeemed. The redeemed of the Lord will be with, with him and we will see gold. We won't see silver. But silver represented redemption. But silver also, silver and lead have been confused. You can confuse the two if you don't really know what you're looking for. So this lead represents the fact that people are thinking that their sins and their false worship to God, their false lives, their fake, vain lives, their deceitful lives. I think the word of God even says that, that deceitfulness is falsehood. It's in, I think it's a psalm. But as people live lives of deceit and vanity and falsehood and pretense and rebellion against God, they're going to think that the things that are taking place, you know, we're getting stimulus money or government is passing laws that seem to favor man. It seems like things are getting better. Well, that's, false. that's a false sense of peace. And God is going to do that because he's going to show people. He's going to start showing people just how 
the sins of man, those that are outside of the will of God, he's going to start showing how the sins have built up a have built up a negative report and built up a bad report with God and God has to respond to that but people are going to see blessings they're going to see good things and think that it's God so that so how this is silver well how this is a talent of lead people are going to look and think that their world is blessing them that their world is is is, is favoring them but they don't know that it's that what they're seeing because they don't have eyes to see and they don't have ears to hear. They're not spiritually sensitive. They're not spiritually in tune with what God is really saying. God is saying, yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you obtain some power. I'll let you be free to live your lives of sin. But you're going to think that I'm, re you're going to think that redemption, you believe, you're going to believe that this is, this is God being good. God is finally being good. But in ultimately, and in reality, it's fake. It's vain. So that's what we see. That's what this talent of lead represents. It represents the, the deception that the people are going to be under to think that God is blessing. God is blessing their nations. And God is really making statements that he's judging the world. And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah and cast it, cast them out. The, cast the weight of the lead upon the mouth thereof. So the woman represented, represents in this the, the multitude of sins, the sins of the people. So the sins of the people. So although the people, uh, so so when people live lives of sin and they refuse to repent, it's like you're 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 being put in a container, to where the Lord is going to keep you in that container and see you in that condition. And it's only when man begins to truly cry out to God and repent when that's going to be lifted. So the weight of this lead, the weight of this lead, this false redemption is going to be on the container of, uh, it's going to be actually be as a serve as a covering over the, over the people. So the multitude, so the, the multitude of the sins, it represents the woman. And then the false redemption and the lead is going to actually contain and cover, serve as a mouth, as a container thereof. And it's also going to serve as a mouth as, because you know with your mouth you speak. So this is what God is going to hear when the people, as the, if people live their lives every day, this is the communication that people are giving to God. We are not redeemed. We don't have your redemption because we don't have you and we are living lives of sin. So that's what, that's what, that's the, the, the place that we are coming to is that people's sins are going to have a voice and it's going to start to speak to God. And that's where we get in Revelation chapter 8 where it talks about the sins, of the, the iniquities and the sins of the people are going to actually reach unto heaven. So people are going to continue to live rebellious, lawless, unclean, unfaithful, wicked, rebellious lives. And God is going to start hearing that. It's going to—it's already sounding like a voice, but that voice is going to get louder and louder, and it's going to actually start to form into a substance. The substance, and that's, it's going to actually start to reach to heaven. So spiritually, people are living lives that dismiss God and disobey God, and God has God. It is eventually going to reach God, and God is going to have to respond to that. And we're going to stop there because that's where I feel that I, the Lord wanted me to stop. But it was important that I communicated this because as sons of God, we must understand our role in all of this. Because we're not going to end it just there because us as the son of God, needs, we need to understand the role that we play, the responsibility that we have in the earth. And this is why God was very, very upset when the churches actually closed their doors. When the churches actually decided to stop meeting and they decided to resort to Zoom meetings and they actually decided to loosely have, a, loosely have church service. When the Lord said to forsake not the assembling, the assembling is a coming together. When you assemble something, you take parts of it and you have to put those parts together to make that thing function. When you buy something and it says assembly is required. 
They give you the box. They give you all of the pieces. And you have to take the pieces and put the pieces together to make this thing that you have purchased functional. None of the parts and the, the parts cannot function unless they're together. And that's the church. That's the church of Jesus Christ. It talks about that in Ephesians 4. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Does it say for the it says for the for the for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. I believe that's how it says it. So the church is important because it keeps the saints that are in the house of God strong and it keeps those in it and, 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 and for the world it keeps the glory and the grace of God active so there is still space for those that are living lives in like in Zechariah chapter 5 they can come out of that and repent they can fight and get out of that life of sin they can address the sin within and accept salvation through Jesus Christ and be free from the bondage and the slavery that sin does as it binds and as it as it troubles and just breaks down the heart of man we as people of God who've been anointed to preach the good tidings can bind up the broken heart and free them as we proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord as we as we bring liberty to the captives so because that's what this is people are living lives of they are they are in prison they are prison. We are prisoners to themselves. They're prisoners to the devil. And the saints, the Christians, the sons of God, the servants of God, we have been freed and we have been called and empowered and equipped to free people from their world that's working against them and accept Jesus so that their world can work in their favor. And as believers, as we worship God, as we continue to assemble, while the world, because we are a part of the world, we're not of it, but we are still in it. So we, to some degree, have to experience measures of this curse. But as the Lord gives us the ability to worship him in spirit and in truth, we have the ability to access the spiritual realm, to obtain and to call on the support and the, the, the help of the angels of God. They come to assist us. They make sure that that, lead, that silver is not... It has not been corroded and turned into lead, false redemption, but we still have redemption from Jesus Christ. And as it says in Psalms 36, it says that the Lord's mercy is in the heavens and his faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. So as we as sons of God live faithful and committed and obedient lives by the power of the Spirit of God, we have the ability to combat this curse, to free people from this curse, and to show the devil that he does not run this world. Although this world is going to have to be done away with because we as people, we as people of God did contribute to the destruction of the world by living lives of sin. But there is salvation. There is space to repent. We do have a mediator being Jesus Christ. We do have him as our high priest. And he was in all points tempted, but yet he lived a sinless and perfect life. And he has access to the Father. And as we worship him, we have access. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We can access the heavens. We can grab a hold of that mercy and release that mercy and have that mercy available on mankind. As we live faithful lives, that continues to reach unto the clouds. It allows us to access the heavenly realms to where... The Spirit of God is active in the breaking of curses, the breaking of chains, the breaking of generational curses and mindsets to where people are not under the bondage and not under the slavery of false redemption. Because the Lord wants us to be free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And that is His desire for you those of you out there that listen and those of you but those of you out there that know that it is time for you to elevate it is time for you to press into the kingdom of God this is the day and this is the time because you live in a world that is cursed and is going to be judged by God understand that the devil is running the world and he is running it through people and some of these people you listen to you give them your money and you give them your attention and the Lord wants to free you from that the word of God says that 
David said, I will set no thing, no wicked thing before my eyes, neither will I let it cleave to me. So because the eyes are the window to your soul, the Lord wants you to look up. Just like Zechariah looked up, he wants you to look up so that you can see and so that you can have access to what he's making available to you. And so you can make sense of your world so you know how and what you are meant to be in your, in your world. The Lord wants you to know who you are and where you're going. And as he, he lets you know, he lets you in to the fact that he wants you to be a son. He shows you that your identity is found in him. And you let him purify your heart and you let him transform you by the renewing of your mind. Then you can go forth in holiness and in righteousness. And you can spend the rest of your days pleasing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that needs to be your desire. And my prayer is that that is what you want today. Because time is running out. And Jesus Christ is coming back to judge the world. But he's also coming back to redeem and to rescue those that served him and you want to be among those that have been called and those have been chosen and those that he has called as the elect so may the spirit of God give you grace and power to be holy to obey and may the grace of God be available for you to accept salvation through Jesus and to go forward in that salvation with obedience and faithfulness unto our Lord Jesus Christ.